Ten girls PC master race of all ages. Welcome to Iron Hammer's PC Gaming's number one show for American tomfoolery, PC hardware, and Game of Thrones coverage. I'm your co-host Simon the Diamond, and with me several miles, aka kilometers away, for our international friends, Charlie Charmander Binks Wilson, how are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm a little upset I didn't win that six hundred million dollars, but I'm getting by. Okay, so in the state of in the great state of Illinois, and what Indiana, I think it was six hundred million dollars for the it's lotto. New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, California. It's like fifteen to twenty states. And it was six hundred million dollars, which is like a hundred euros. So it's a lot of money. <laughs> Jesus, dude, I, I, uh, why can't they just have six hundred one million dollar prizes? I because think that not would be as many the... people would play. <laughs> My God, man, what's the first game you would buy if you got a six hundred million dollars, Charlie? I would buy the <laughs> NFL. <laughs> hey, all right, nice, nice, nice. Um, well, you know, I feel like complaining about Google Plus and all this stuff that how long it took us to get the show up and running. But you know what? By the time people listen to it, it will be irrelevant. But Google Plus, if you're going to do a huge update that change every that changes the complete basis on how we. Do these hangouts. Please send a email blast out so we know what the hell to look forward to. Um, other than that, the show is all back to normal. Charlie, this is part two of two of the PC case manufacturer showdown. Uh, last week, we narrowed down from eight brands. We had You and I were trying to decide from these eight who the four semifinalists would be. We had Thermal Take, Antec, Lian Lee, Silverstone, Fractal Design, Cooler Master, Corsair, and NZXT, and we went down to four finalists. Charlie, why don't you tell our our um, master race what those four semifinalists are before we um, start off the show? We went with Thermal Take over Antec. Leon Lee lost to Silverstone. Uh, Cooler Master over Fractal Design, and Corsair over NZXT. And I believe I stand by those still. Me too. Me too, I think so. Um, the three criteria on which we chose those were durability, accessibility for future modification, and uh, airflow slash room for cooling. Um, I think we can add to that criteria today. You know, we're, you know obviously the, the second part is, goes a little faster, except there's a little more deliberation at times. Um, but, uh, so we're, we're going to talk about that in the second half of the show. For the first half, Charlie, I want to talk, uh, talk about our wonderful week. Um, but first, let me check the Twitters and the Facebooks and all that stuff to see if there are any conversations happening that we should be privy to. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to us um, after the fact, you can check out the show every single Tuesday uh, at 10.30 p.m. Central United States time. Um, on YouTube, live on YouTube, live on Google+, and afterwards it'll be on ironhammers.org. So you have plenty of opportunities to check the show out. Any of them is equally as beautiful, and uh, we are appreciative uh, of any of your wonderful feedback and participation. So, Charlie, what on earth in the week of May 13th until May 21st have you done, sir? And uh, I want, I, you know what? I, I don't even want to know all that. I don't even want to know what you've been playing. I don't even want to know what you've been watching. I just want to know what, as a human being, Charlie Wilson did. Just what did you do this last week, man? I want to know. I want to know about you. Well, um, I've been doing my night running, like, late as hell. It is so nice to just run down the middle of a freaking street, like a four-lane street, just like nobody gives a shit. Um, I mean, you got skunks in the bushes. I've... Uh, Facebooked about it extensively, and uh, in the street, you know, you you have more lighting. The bushes are further away. I find my runs were a lot more stress free, so I've been doing a lot of that. And I actually, uh, and I completed last time about a sunburn. 
I did a hill workout in the middle of the day too, and I burned again. So <laughs> that's why I'm still red. It's, uh, it's fresh. Um, besides that, I went to a bridal shower. Have you ever been to a bridal shower? No, you haven't because no. it's for girls. Okay, Bible that's showers right. are for girls. <laughs> that's what I was. Wa- that's what I was wondering. Yeah, why were you um, there? I don't know. I think my mom was concerned that my my sister's getting married. Uh, she thought the uh, count was a little low, but it wasn't. So it was like twenty or thirty women there, you know, relatives and cousins and my sister's friends and people I'll never see again. And then <laughs> me and my brothers and my dad. It was, it was okay. Uh, I haven't seen my brother in a while, but yeah, generally speaking, men don't belong. It's just like girly games and. Uh, giggling and you know that started off the first half of that explanation was awesome it was you said it was you and about 30 women and i thought all right great and then he said they're all pretty much all related to you in one way or another now if it were like a bachelorette party and you know it was like your sister and like all her friends now in that case you show up half the women there think you're the stripper then things can get a little exciting but if it's all cousins and aunties and nieces, then um, there's it, nothing good that can happen. It wasn't. There was maybe, you know, a lot of my sister's friends and people I've never seen, like I said, but they're all pretty well hooked up and way, way younger. It, it, it wouldn't have worked out. But we did <laughs> later in the day, because we were drinking and, I was, again, family was in town. Um, I got caught up in a, a bridal thing at the uh, at one of the local bars and they took my sock. She was like... <laughs> Like, I want your sock. It's on a card. I need your sock. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I, I like took my shoe off. I'm like, you go down and get it. It's all yours. Wow. What the and hell? He took my sock. I'm like, okay, fine. Is it like a, it was like a scavenger hunt? I don't know, but she's got one of my socks. Nice. There was a girl grabbing my ass there, too, but she kept running away. So I'm like, okay, fine. You know, go ahead, run away. Yeah, like, we're, we're too old for... <laughs> For uh, girls playing hard to get, it's like it's like oh he, he, ah, she's gone. I don't care anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> well, bridal shower. You know what? At least you got to spend some quality time with the family. That's all that matters. Um, you know, I'm trying to think. Uh, so for myself, before we move on to the uh, multimedia part of our show. Everyone knows we're in Chicago. We discussed this last week. It's starting to get very hot. Uh, right now, Charlie, you have the air conditioning on. I've got the window wide open behind me. I'm hoping some air seeps in. And, Charlie, why? Oh, nice. I see air conditioning. See, this, this is why, folks, you need to watch this show live so that you can see what, you know, the hidden. It's a, it's a three-dimensional show. You don't just see our faces. You see around the room in a panoramic 360-degree view. Now, in Chicago, unfortunately, folks, it's either – arctic cold or it's freaking humid and terribly hot and right now it's pretty hot so i'm not complaining i'm just saying if we look a little shiny uh (laughs) well actually charlie's not gonna look shiny because he's nice and cold but i've i don't have ac in this room so by the end of the show i'm gonna be um i'm gonna be melting oh and i totally forgot to mention of course my drink of the show it's almost finished i've been drinking it it's absolute citron with uh, ginger ale. Charlie, what have you been drinking, sir? Beer. <laughs> now, you know what? You being the beer guy, I think you're going to have to bring, like, a different beer every week so we can, you know, maybe you can get, like, some local some local um, IPAs or something like that to uh, no, increase yeah. exposure. Bitney's has got quite a selection. Um, if you're in the Chicago area, I'm not sure how far out they expand, but Bitney's has a In little four cases and six cases. It's usually pretty affordable. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. Nice, 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 nice. Not for uh, me, right? for, for you guys. For yeah. the viewers and for you, Mr. Simon. Exactly. Even if you one day decide to stop drinking, you still got to drink beer on the show just to, <laughs> just to increase awareness. I can do a beer review. <laughs> uh, shout out to everybody watching live. Uh, my, our, our good buddy uh, Mike just joined the chat room here uh, through the Facebook page. Once again, uh, if you're on Facebook, Iron Hammer's PC Gaming is where you get all your updates and all that good stuff and uh, polls and contests and pictures of me and all that good stuff. 
Uh, Charlie, so it looks like you had a fun week. looks like you enjoyed the nice weather outside. I went to a place called Flat Top Grill. Have you ever heard of it? Um, I have not. It says in my notes it's stir-fry, which means it must be something decent. Yes, so I never knew what the hell stir fry meant. Apparently, you go to this place, you pay thirteen bucks, you get a big, you get a big old bowl, and there's a little station with about ten meats, thirty sauces, and then you got your rice and corn and cheese and lettuce and all types of insane stuff, and everything's you just shove it all in a bowl like a like a huge bowl, and then you uh, put it by the kitchen. And then they boil it or cook it or whatever, or marinate it, whatever you want to call it. Ten minutes later, they bring it to your um, to your table, and everything's created exactly how you liked it. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, I feel like there are such few locations of stir fry of a flat top grill that if you have one in your area, I encourage you to go because I approve. It is an Iron Hammers overclocked approved restaurant, and uh, if you haven't. If you don't have that place, then look for a stir fry restaurant around in your area and find one. I think it's very, um, I think it's good stuff, and I just had to mention it on the show because it's it's a great experience. Um, we should uh, like uh, split on a on a plaque that they can put on their wall. We'll be like, <laughs> put this on your wall. Yeah, there's <laughs> like Zagat Guide, Metro Mix, and then Iron Hammer's Overclock PC Gaming Podcast approved <laughs> restaurant. Yeah. Business will double. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it'll go up at least five percent. I want to have what Simon had. Yeah, just yeah, just pictures of us all sweaty uh, <laughs> on, the, on the show. Uh, so, so it looks like we had a fun week. Uh, game wise, I've played a little. Okay, as summer comes along and it gets hot, and we want to stay inside with the air conditioning on, I've had a chance to play a little, little bit more. Charlie, you saw me all over Facebook. Counter Strike Global Offensive or CS:GO was a seven dollars and fifty cent, which uh, I forget what that is in euros for our the UK part of our community, but it's cheap. Uh, I purchased it, played a little bit, enjoyed it. Did you end up picking it up as well, Charlie? Um, I did not. I had a forty dollar gift card and I saw Borderlands on sale. I'm like, mm. I said I was gonna get that, and I did. I got the game of the year edition for Borderlands. It'll probably take me like a week to download it because I have to work <laughs> around my family schedule. Oh. Here in the States, uh, downloading speeds aren't quite as nice as they are in Europe. It's, uh, I think I get like maybe 200 megabits per second, maybe. <laughs> and so if I'm on it, then no one else gets to do anything on the Internet. So I'll eventually get that downloaded. Maybe we'll do something with that. And uh, I went with Witcher 2 because nice. I want to see Witcher 2. I heard it was good. And uh, especially our friend Elvis out there. He uh, barked my ear off for 10 minutes about it, so <laughs> nice. it's on him. Well, it's good, and you just beat Witcher 1, so you're fresh. You know, you're going to be able to actually enjoy what's going on. Um, um, it says here you've been actually playing Candy Crush Saga. <laughs> yes, How long you, are you going to stay with that? So you've discussed this about half a dozen shows in a row, so I'm like, you know what? I'm getting so many requests from you and everyone else for Candy Crush Saga that... On Facebook, that I need to check it out. So I doubt, So I installed it on Facebook. I think I see there's an Android app as well, but I don't want to delve into that. And uh, I played it one time <laughs> for like 15 minutes, and uh, I eclipsed a bunch of people on my friends list already. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's very rewarding in the same way that Peggle and Angry Birds are that you can play for a few minutes at a time, and it's uh, instant gratification. You know, if you're having a crappy day to eat. So I, I pretty much stared at the screen and zoned out and played it and saw all the colors and all the candies and all that stuff. So it's pretty fun. I I understand the reasoning for this, but I really dislike how every single thing you do in that game, at the end of the round, it says, hey, let your friends know, or hey, invite your friends to, to see your score and all that stuff. And Unfortunately, I have people on my friends list that are not as nice as you, Charlie. They they actually will click on those things every single time. <laughs> you just send me a request once in a while, like, hey, I challenge you. But there's people that are like, this guy invited you to see his high score. Like, I don't care. So, you know, I had to actually remove someone off my friends list completely. I don't think they'll notice. 
uh, because that was getting a little annoying, but the game is I pretty have, nice. I have lost friends over it. I noticed my friend list goes down. I think it's because I was broadcasting more than I expected, like completing mm. levels and whatnot, so I've lost some friends over Candy Crush Saga. And uh, what, what do you think about the music? God, the music. It just... I hate it. <laughs> I hope I don't know if that's what you were going to say, but I can't stand it. <laughs> oh, it's such a fun game if you turn it off and put something else on YouTube or something. I did. <laughs> and you can turn off the music, which, God, if you put on, like, the Castlevania music or, or what was I listening to? I think Skyrim. It nice. is so much better. <laughs> that's great, man. Yeah, like, like the, the, the one song has this stupid whistle. That's <laughs> I forgot what it goes. It's like this really dumb li- whistle uh, loop, and it loops after, like, 15 seconds. It's like the, the whole song is like a 15-second loop. I don't know if it changes from world to world, but... No, it doesn't change. No? So I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I turned it off. I left the sounds on, and yeah, yeah I was listening to some to some video game soundtrack as well, I think, but... Uh, oh no! I had the new um, Daft Punk album, which you know, which I'll talk about something else regarding that too. But uh, it's fun. I mean, I'll still play it a little bit until I get bored of it. But <laughs> it's 365 levels, and it gets hard. Ooh. I mean, it like basically forces you to start using bonuses and buying bonuses, and you have to nag your friends every time you beat like 18 levels and go to the next episode. I really didn't expect you to start playing it, and I certainly don't <laughs> expect you to continue playing it. But it is a uh, funny little thing. I, maybe I'll play one more. I have the day off tomorrow. Maybe I'll play a little bit tomorrow and then and then uh, uninstall it. But um, Because th- those like match four games and stuff like that, ever since the days of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, I enjoy those games until I have to do combos because I'm terrible... At setting up combos and, and bonuses in that game. And in games like that, I hate when I have to use multipliers or I'll lose. You know, it's kind of like, you know, it, it just, it, it takes the fun out of those games. Like, I like just matching four and and <laughs> moving on, you know. But when it's like, well, you kind of have to get a multiplier and, and, and do at least ten combos to pro- progress, then I don't care anymore. It, it, it absolutely forces you to do the tricks that they have. Because, I mean, there, if there's like squares over here, but you can only get those squares by making a super thing over here or by hmm. cheating with the bonuses. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I think I'll play a few more. Maybe I'll beat the first world and and, and just uninstall it, man. But, God damn. Um, but other than that, uh, have you ever, I don't know if you ever played, uh, you ever played Beat Hazard, Charlie? Um, I've heard of it. All right. It was it's a really good game. I've had it for a year or two now. Then it was on the in one of the humble indie bundles a few weeks ago. It's pretty much like Geometry Wars. It's a dual stick retro looking shooter except with this one you you put your own music in it. You know, it just you go into your folder and you you know, you navigate through your through your uh, hard drive and put whatever song so you could put the Skyrim soundtrack if you want. And then, you know, the song will start quiet and then as you destroy more spaceships you collect power-ups like increase volume increase the lights increase the effects so the 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 longer you stay alive the the louder the song gets and the crazier the effects on the screen get the faster your ship goes the bigger your your bullets go and all this insane stuff so it's a pretty exciting pretty exciting game and i like i said the new daft punk album came out i don't know if you listen to them but good electronic stuff and uh i kind of Played along with it and, and enjoyed it. And uh, like I said, other than that, Counter Strike Global Offensive. And uh, I th- I feel like there's something else I was playing. I'm gonna look in my um in my thing here. Well, I don't know, so I won't even waste anyone's time. Question: Have you ever played Robotron 2084? I don't think so. Maybe I did. Was it was that? It was an arcade, arcade game. Okay. It was an arcade game with two sticks, basically. It plays like Geometry Wars. That's why I ask. I think it was the original, you know, one stick to move, one stick to shoot game. Very hard, very ahead of its time. Um, we had it at Target. I don't know if you had the, the little arcade set up that probably nobody bought, but uh, we had it at Target. We eventually put one of them in our break room. Oh, awesome. And it was no, a big deal. Wow. No, I, I didn't see that. I, 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 know, I must have seen it. 
but I'm, maybe I think I'm just thinking of Tron. But I think the earliest game I played of that nature was uh, Smash TV. Oh yeah, Smash TV, Super Nintendo. I played the console one first, but then I saw the arcade, which was had that same dual stick. I think it was like a trackball, or maybe I'm losing my mind. But yeah, it also had that kind of dual stick control scheme. I'm trying to remember. It's killing me to remember what the what the actual joy pads were like on that. But yeah, I remember we had Smash TV at a place called Child World, which is a toy store that's out of business. Oh right. man, it was a good time. Were those in the malls? I forget. Maybe. Um, our Child oh, World was a standalone, crap. right by Ranhurst, if you know where that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all like out, an outdoor mall now. It's a Man. Home Depot now, yeah. Holy crap. Child World. Hopefully other people in the United States will know what the hell that was. I Was that a toy, was that a toy store or what? It was a toy store. It had like castle things on the roof. Um, yeah, I want to say they had like a panda for their mascot, but maybe not. <laughs> I like going there because that was the first time I had like I was in a store with a video game section and they had like Turbo Graphics 16. It's like ah, oh, super cool. And... <laughs> wow, man! I oh god, see, I I I barely remember. Oh man, I trust me. I want to just wax nostalgic on <laughs> on that stuff right now. But people are if we haven't lost people with Candy Crush Saga, we will have lost them now. <laughs> but Anyways, you know, we're going to have to have a spin-off of this show, which is already a spin-off, where we just talk about uh, Chicago things from the early 90s. Um, oh. Yeah, next episode will be uh, Showbiz Pizza. <laughs> you know, there is a, a, a YouTube channel called, like, Gaming in the Clinton Years, and you do <laughs> see a lot of Super Nintendo stuff. I forget exactly if it's, like, play throughs or just soundtracks, but I would define that 90s era as like our Clinton years. Wow, that's a really cool... Well, It's a good that, channel. I'm going to have to check that out. That sounds awesome. Um, and finally, Charlie, before we move on to the, uh, to the crux of what this show is about, the um, gear of the month that we're discussing, which is PC gaming cases, last thing, last non-PC gaming relevant thing, but that is... Very important to our show, okay, and and we'll save the the flagship show till the till the end of this conversation. But what have, let, I'd like to talk about real quick what we've been watching in the last in the last week or so. Of course, we're going to talk about Game of Thrones, but I will have to give a shout out to Mad Men, which it's nearing the end of the season and it's getting awesome. It had a very fun drug induced show uh, uh, episode, shall I say? So Mad Men, it's getting good. If you haven't watched it before, wait for the season to end. And then just have a marathon at home. Watch all whatever six seasons. Um, and then I see that you also watch this, Charlie, the series finale of the American version of The Office. Um, what did you think of the finale? And what do you feel in your heart <laughs> of the entire span of the show, which is now as iconic as Seinfeld, I think, in this country? Um, I don't know if I'd go that far, but it was good. I mean, it got stale, but the characters are still, you know, they're there. And it's kind of like, I'd say, like, Two and a Half Men, which I haven't watched in a while. It's like, it lost any sense of relevant plot, but it always, it stayed funny to me. Um, you know, I'm a fan of good writing, even if the plot's not there. I don't watch sitcoms for the, the love interests and what have you. So I thought it was good, and I thought the finale was spot on. I mean, it did everything it wanted to do. Closed the the curtains. It uh, you know brought back old characters. It it was good. What did you think? Yeah, yeah, it was great. I think it's amazing that they that they actually made uh, Michael Scott and and Dwight Schrute die in a tragic car accident at the end. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and then when Pam and and, and Jim. You know, get on an airplane for um, you know their wedding uh, uh, to renew their vows, and the plane crashes and they die too. Like I couldn't believe all the all the deaths that were in that episode, but uh, pretty much it was it was a fun time. And I remember about ten years ago when I heard of the British version of The Office. I was like reading in some indie 
magazine, and I was like, oh, this looks cool, you know, and it was the British version with Ricky Gervais before anyone knew who he was, and I rented those on DVD and, and loved them. So when I when I heard that there was an American version coming out, I got super pumped. Of course, the first season of six episodes was a carbon copy of the British one, and it didn't have its own identity, but as it went on, and the reason I say it's, it's almost as iconic as Seinfeld is, just in terms of... But then you're right. Then you used to compare it to Two and a Half Men, and I guess we have a lot of, I guess we have a, a handful of shows right now going on, uh, including Big Bang Theory, which you'll talk about in a sec, that that have kind of fueled this generation with catchphrases and and uh, you know cultural references and whatnot. But so The Office is done. Uh, I have never I've watched one episode of Big Bang Theory. So was this the season finale or the series finale? Of Big Bang Theory. No. Yeah, yeah. I think we're. I, I think lost we had, a friend. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. I think we had a little connection here. Um, Big Bang Theory was that the season or series finale? It was the season finale. Um, not a big deal, I don't think. But you know, as an episode goes, it was okay. If you are into Star Trek and science and nerd humor at all, it's it's been pretty consistently great, and of course, uh, what's her name, Kaylee Cuoco, Haley Cuoco, mm -hmm. she's spot on too. Incidentally, she has one leg that's made of titanium. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> interesting. Now, I've seen, I've seen one episode of the show, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be straight up, I couldn't stand it. Now, <laughs> I think that's for three reasons. One of three reasons, okay. Number All right. one, num number one. It's not funny, which I'm, and these, I'm just saying it's, it's and, and I'm just saying it's one of these three. I'm not saying it's that reason. I'm just saying it's one in my in my head. It's one of three reasons I didn't enjoy. It. Number one, it's not funny, which I'm not saying that's the case. Number well, two, number two, I'm not enough. I'm not knowledgeable enough in sci-fi and comic book pop culture to get half the references. Or number three, I'm too stupid to get the scientific references because those guys play very smart individuals. So I think, and I'm going to go for number two because that's least offensive to all parties. <laughs> and what's, but what's said, you know, and I, I've watched, I watched one episode of Star Trek The Next Generation because I'm starting to get interested in it. Uh, and I've only watched the new J.J. Abrams films. Um, I've never watched Battlestar Galactica or Stargate or Farscape or any of that stuff. So I guess when I think about it, I'm really not as knowledgeable as I'd like to be in sci-fi uh, pop culture. So maybe that's why I didn't – maybe that's why I haven't enjoyed it much. But So based on what I just told you, should I give this show another try or am I just never going to enjoy it if that's my, uh, if that's my background? Um, Big Bang Theory, I definitely recommend another try. Star Trek The Next Generation, I admit – Going back and watching it, it has shown its date. It's dated a little bit, you know. There's a lot of '80s makeup and fluffy hair, and <laughs> you know, it it doesn't quite live up to what I remembered it being. I think the old Star Trek and some of the newer seasons, even there, or I'm losing my words, the newer series are pretty good, like Deep Space Nine and the the latest one with the chick captain. Uh, Voyager, Voyager with oh, uh, Jerry Ryan, who is incidentally a former Miss Illinois from like oh, 1988. Yeah? Nice, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I would give up on Next Generation before I give up on Big Bang Theory. I think the humor might have been, it might have become more mainstream since its inception. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll have to check it out because everyone loves it, and um, you know I will not disagree with Kaylee Cuoco's. Um, I. Rated. I believe it is the number one rated show right now in terms of the Nielsen ratings. And if you guys don't know what that is, that's basically people have boxes in their home that tracks what they watch and sends it to a statistic company, which I think is actually right around where you live, Simon. Oh, really? I think it's in Schaumburg, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to go... Uh, let's go interview them for our <laughs> show and see what's going on. But, all right, well, I'll, you know what? If I tried Candy Crush Saga, I'll try... I'll try another episode of, of Big Bang Theory. Um, now, 
I see that. Uh, so late is it the Late Show or Late Night with Craig Ferguson? Um, I don't know. In fact, I haven't even watched much late night TV lately. But I turned it on recently. Like I literally don't turn my TV on on your average week. But I turned it on recently, and they had Marjorie Tyrell on there. And I like her in the show a lot. In the books, she's hardly there at all. I mean, she's there, but she doesn't get much face time. In the series, she's probably a favorite. And this is the one that's about to marry Joffrey. Correct. All right. Yes. Which, yeah, I can't imagine her not being that big in the book because she's a pretty huge character right now on the show. Um, She's big in the book without being there a lot. The same with Tywin Lannister. Tywin Lannister is like the feared man, the, the man behind the Lannisters, the guy who is actually holding everything together and pulling the strings. But he doesn't get much face time in the show, in, in the book either, but they find ways to stick him in the same way they have with Marjorie. And, um, the only time you really see a lot of Marjorie in the books is through Cersei Lannister, who obviously hates her, and I think <laughs> that's coming through in the show pretty well. Yes. But she is awesome. Like, the actual actress giving her interview was just saucy as hell. Very attractive. Uh, she's got, you know, kind of a pig nose, but it's cute. She's got the cat <laughs> eyes. and <laughs> yeah, She has a great interview. She has a very interesting look. I mean, she's no Amelia Clark, but, yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely, she's definitely uh, very, uh, very uh, I, well, good. I think uh, the actress that plays Marjorie Tyrell is an actual blonde, too, which Daenerys is not. I believe she is a brunette in every picture that I've seen outside of the show, and her hair is supposed to be silver, like gray, silver, not blonde. <laughs> so after that, if you're going to fake her hair color, at least get it right. Well, hey, let me give a quick shout-out to uh, one of our good friends who started listening to the show, and uh, he agrees with, with my love of, of Daenerys Targaryen, the, the mother of dragons. Uh, I'm not sure if he wants us to th- give his real name, but let's say what's up to Jarrett. Uh, Jared, Jared E, Jared E. We'll just give that. We'll just give that much. Uh, he listens to the show. Good friend of the show. Uh, and um, so look, man, Game of Thrones. It rocks. We love it. It's got to be almost uh, coming to an end. But once again, if you listen to the show week after week, and and you hear this, and you don't know what we're talking about, just watch the damn show so that you're not wasting ten minutes a week listening to us talk about some some crap that you have no idea what uh, you know what has to do with anything. So now let me jump in here and I'm going to start reading some community comments in a second. So Charlie, I think I think that's it. Any games, movies, shows you want to discuss before we move on? Uh, like I said, I haven't watched much TV. Um, it's just been The Office, which is done, The Big Bang Theory, Game of Thrones, and then uh, you got Dexter and Breaking Bad coming up. Ooh, there's a new it. trailer. I have not watched it, but there's a new trailer for Dexter, uh, the new season. Have you seen it? Um, I've seen bits and pieces. I actually have them on my Facebook as a like, so they keep showing stuff, like mm-hmm. pictures and quotes. So I probably have. And FYI, I read the books, and I didn't care for them after the second one. So if anyone is thinking about reading the books, um, read Game of Thrones instead. The Dexter's books read fast, but they get weird after book three. Okay. I, I do remember you mentioned this, yes. Um, yeah, start, um, yeah, Dexter and, and Breaking Bad are indeed starting. True Blood is starting as well. Before I forget, I actually somehow forgot, even though we were just discussing this, I did watch Star Trek Into Darkness. Um, and it was a amazing film, but the movie that it's inspired by, which I will not spoil, I have not seen. So I'll have to go back and watch the original films and show. That's why I'm trying to watch the show, too, to understand more of the references. But you Star Trek Into the... Darkness, check it out. You didn't watch the first movie? I did not. No, I watched the 2009 movie, but not... Oh. Star Trek, the motion picture. Well, that should be all you need because they change the timeline or whatever, so you you don't need to know anything else because this is meant for a general audience. It's not meant for the you know the techies, although they throw in the little bits and cameos, what have you. So I don't think you really had problems with. Certain no, no, spots? no, no, not at all. But there were some references where like people would gasp in the theater. 
And, you know, my girlfriend is a, is a huge uh, Trekkie as well, so I'd be like, okay, that's obviously something that resonated in the crowd, but I'd like to watch it, you know, because obviously J.J. Abrams is, is, has, to, has to pay homage to, to, uh, to all, the, all the original fans and, um, you know. Oh, well, then you want to watch the classic, uh, the classic uh, episodes, not The Next Generation, because this is, I mean, Next Generation is Picard, not Kirk. I mean, it's completely different characters. The only problem is that I, I hate all television <laughs> that started before like 85 like i hate the cult i hate the drab colors i hate how muffled all the sound sh- sound is i hate the special effects of that era you know like it just sucks like the same reason i can't like people some people like you know all in the family and yeah. and all these like old school shows from the late 60s and like they depress me so I know Star Trek was ahead of its time, but you know, like it I'm had looking... a black lady <laughs> yes. on a spaceship kissing a white man. Which yeah, they didn't used to do black ladies on spaceships back in the day. No, <laughs> and an Asian guy too. They had an Asian guy who is Star Trek. Gay. Now I'm not even <laughs> he was gay. Yeah. <laughs> now now I'm not even trying to be funny here, but. Let me ask you this, Charlie, all right? With the success of the original Star Trek, now obviously the, the first televised kiss, the first televised interracial kiss ever was was with Uhura and, uh, was it Kirk? I have no idea. Yeah, you know, William Shatner and, 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 the, uh, and the other lady. So let me ask you this. With there being a black lady, a gay Asian man, and all these mixed races in one area, and this being in the late 60s, early 70s, during the civil rights movement in the United States of America, do you think that the success of Star Trek had anything to do with our country's acceptance of just interracial relationships and, like, like accepting other races on television? Because there were not many Asians on American television back then. So what um, do you think, man? Did it, did it contribute at all? No. I don't think so because Star Trek was for nerds. I forget how long the series went, but it wasn't very long. Um, no, I. I All right. I don't know. No. I never watched. I never watched the original. So plus, I mean, remember this is mostly white people watching Star Trek, <laughs> and yeah, you yeah. know they're fine with you know white guys can go ahead and kiss black girls. But if you have a black guy kiss a white woman, that would be something different Ooh. entirely. So you're telling me the only people that accept... So, so you're telling me that, that the original Star Trek just created a lot of um, fat, white, nerdy neckbeards in the 60s that had a fetish for black girls? I... Um, maybe. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Star Trek fans, I, Charlie said it, not me, you know. I'm sorry. No, but anyways, enough with that. I think that's enough, man. I think that's. I think it sounds like we've had an exciting week, Charlie. I think, I think, um, I think I have successfully alienated all Star Trek fans, and um, now it's time to alienate more, um, more uh, hardcore PC gamers with the Iron Hammer's Overclock Battle of the Month, Part Two of Two. Once again, like we said at the uh, beginning of the show, we discussed eight PC case manufacturers, and we have narrowed it down to Thermal Take, Silverstone, Cooler Master. And Corsair, and the question, Charlie, on everyone's mind is, which of these would you use for your next PC gaming build? And oh, and the bigger question is, what do you even look for now in these cases? Now, I do have some community feedback. If you don't mind me reading these, um, uh, so I've got, I've got, uh, I've got Mr. P, Mr. P on the Facebook page. Um, I showed him, you know, I showed him all of the uh, the options here, and I haven't even read this this uh, this comment here. But uh, he says, "Very interesting range of cases, even within a single brand. The most interesting concept was the Arrow Cool Strike X Air Open, including adjustable position fans, and I feel like that's one of the skeleton cases we were talking about, or like the exoskeleton case." 
I'd probably like to do a physical side by side of the ones available, which are the the you know the brands that we've got on there. Those four. He goes. Although I would prefer the compact models, I ended up liking the Corsair Vengeance C70 because its features and look reminded me of the type of equipment I used aboard the Coast Guard cutter I was assigned to. Uh, I have not looked at the Corsair Vengeance C70, but I'm going to do that right now. Um, cases the Vengeance series as well. Did you know this, Jordan? Uh, I couldn't hear your question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that, I, I didn't realize that they were that the Corsair was branding their cases under the Vengeance name. Oh, they well. have the Vengeance, the Carbide, the... Um, Obsidian, uh, there's some other ones too. Basically, there's like four. They all look very similar, but they're all pretty solid too. Nice, nice, nice. Well, here I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a link to this one in the chat room, Charlie, because I, I see what Mr. Pew was talking about. This is definitely a military looking uh, uh, a piece here, and I really like this. And this well, gets this gets major points for. Um, so it's very, very major points for our for our tournament here because this looks like a very durable, durable machine. It has nice handles too. They're metal, not stupid plastic things. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're like they flip out. That's cool. I noticed that too. All right, um, and then I do have another. I do have another comment here. Uh, give me just a sec. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Give me just a sec, folks. I've got, I've, we've got we're all over uh, social media here. So I've got uh, Night Shadow in the chat room. Um, uh, he said, first of all, he said, I'm surprised Antec isn't in this poll. They make amazing cases. And, of course, I had to mention that they were. Antec was in the running last week, but they were eliminated. He said, Cooler Master is known for their quality, but their cases look like blank I don't want to swear on the show, Charlie. This is a family show. Actually, it's not, but nevertheless. Oh, Corsair. <laughs> Corsair. <laughs> Corsair has classy-looking cases, and their brand is up and coming. Parentheses. They used to be like Samsung. They sucked, but now they are top-notch. Uh, that's true. I think Corsair is definitely up and coming. So so, so, so what Night Shadow was talking about here is that Cooler Master got the quality and Corsair is just overall overall uh, up and coming and then I've got two more I've got hardly Dan in the chat room of Iron Hammers and Gamesman fame he wants he loves the Corsair 900D bless you Charlie he wants the Corsair 900D and uh, fodder which is a community member and has a community rig uh, sent the cooler master cosmos 2. So we've got a Cooler Master and a Corsair. We've got two for Cooler Master, two for Corsair. Uh, so far, none for uh, Thermal Take or Silverstone. So, Charlie, I'm going to say let's just deep d jump deep into it right now. I think... So from these four, who needs to face off with one another? I think, I think Cooler Master and Corsair have similar um, philosophies in design and, and quality, and I think... Silverstone and Thermal Take are a little more utilitarian, but what do you think from from these uh, from these choices? I could go either way. And as for the Antec comment, Antec lost to Thermal Take, and I stand by that. Um, the only Antecs I looked at, or even liked, I brought up the Land Boy and its modularness, but uh, being all plastic, uh, they don't even make it anymore. And beside that, you've got the 900 version 3, which is nice, but all the Antecs look pretty much the fans in the front, goofiness on the side. So I stand by Thermal Takeover Antec. Um, and as for, like I said, matchups, you can totally go whatever way you want. Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't cool. care. Cool. Well, I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna say let's do Thermal Take versus Silverstone. And... That's the harder one because once again, like as I mentioned last week, I'm not the I'm not the most knowledgeable in these cases. However, I think that uh, just from just from what I've seen and and used, I think that from these two, 
Thermal Take has the selection. They have the... They, they have taken the, the, the TT eSports route. So they have a, a great selection. They've got great modding. They've got, um, you know, it's, 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 they want, they want you to, to build a machine with their, with their power supplies and with their uh, components and, and all the, and everything and take to a LAN party. You know, they're there for the gamers for sure. Uh, and then Silverstone, man, I mean, Silverstone is, 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 is quality stuff too. They're the, they're the guys with, with the aluminum cases Heavy duty I can, stuff. I mentioned to you a little bit on Facebook. I can speak a little bit more to some of Silverstone's latest offerings. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Or do we want to do this matchup now? Or oh yeah, would you like to right now, man. Too? Thermal. Yeah, Thermal Take versus Silverstone, man. I was looking at some of the new stuff. I just sent you a link to a new Thermal Take case. Um, I think it's called the Urban something or other. It looks pretty sweet. Very similar Ooh. to the Fractal design that you sent me a while back. Yeah, it's got a kind yeah, of small brush, window, brush. But, but the front is nice. It's got a, a dock. Um, but I, I want to talk about Silverstone a little bit. Like I said, yeah. I like them over the Lee because they're a little more innovative. Um, I've used stuff. I've, you know, I've basically Lee and Lee's stuff all has looked the same for the last 10 years. Um, <laughs> but the latest... Three thermal take cases have been reviewed um, at length, and basically they all use the same chassis. It's a mid tower chassis. Um, you got the Raven Four, the Fortress Four, and a new one called the Mammoth. They all use the same chassis, and uh, when I discussed my case, I told you that the number one thing I like is that the motherboard was rotated and puts the wires out on the top. I thought that was very convenient, very cool. Yeah. Um, the thing I hated the most was the plastic. Well, the new Raven is more plastic. The front even has a plastic hinge. Oh, my God. Oh. And all three of these chassis now have the motherboard entirely upside down. So <laughs> the wires are back out the back. Um, I don't remember the reasoning behind putting it upside down. It's probably just to be weird, but they'll say something about cooling. I don't know. <laughs> Um, mm. I will say that the Mammoth case was kind of interesting in that it could actually hold a like high grade filter, like a 3M like car filter. So, oh wow! <laughs> yeah, the ventilation isn't the greatest, but it is quiet, and no dust will go in there at all. I know you've been to Mexico a bit. I know there's uh, dirt floor houses out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It'll keep all that dirt out of the case. It's got high-powered, I think, 140 millimeter fans in the front, and <laughs> like I said, I don't have the link to it, but they pull out this thick-ass thing. Um, the fortress, I forget what I thought about the fortress, but I wasn't impressed. Um, but then, like I, I just gave you some of uh, or one of Thermal Takes new offerings, and they've got a lot of new stuff that. I admit it looks a lot like the older stuff, like the Chaser and the Overseer. Um, but I think I'd actually, in my decision, I would take the Thermal Take over, over the Silverstone. If for no other reason than the latest offerings going up on one end and way down on the other. I think I agree. And like I said, this whole time I've been looking, and, and, and last week I was looking at the Silverstone, I th and, and they won because they were... Definitely more durable, and, and they had some larger cases. But to be honest, I love the fact that they have so many with so much aluminum. But like you said, they're going more and more now. Just a lot of a lot of tacky plastic components. And then when you compare that to Thermal Take, which Thermal Take is all plastic. I mean, let's not let's not get that part mixed up. I mean, you look at Thermal Take, and their cases are all insane plastic designs. However. They've got dozens and dozens of different designs. They've got unique design ideas. Like I said, just for the level 10 and, and the GT uh, themselves. And and then they have some that like the Urban that are minimalist, that, that stack up to Lee and Lee and Silverstone designs, and even Fractal Design. And then they have the whole eSports um, series. So I think, the, you know... They're durable cases. They're not going to be the aluminum like like some of the high end Silverstone, but 
I think Thermal Take wins this one for their originality and their um, variety and the fact that Silverstone has diverted somewhat from their pure hardcore aluminum cases. So I'm going to say, I mean, if you're down with it, I'm going to say let's give that point to uh, Thermal Take. They, uh, they got cheap. Plus, I'm, I'm just going through the new egg site now. I started off on the Thermal Take. But apparently their Thermal Take Soprano, although it's a mid-tower, I know you were shopping for, for the uh, full towers, it apparently won Maximum PC's Best of the Best winner of 2013. And nice. you know what? That means Thermal Take didn't. Or uh, Silverstone didn't, so <laughs> Yeah. There you and go. I'm, and I'm looking mode. at that I'm looking at that now. It's a, just minimalist. I mean there's a snow edition, which just minimalist, pure brush steel in the front, plastic on the side. It looks looks good, man. Does the trick. My pickle has officially been tickled by that case, Charlie. Alright. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Thermal Take moves on to the finals, and then finally comes on to Cooler Master and Corsair. And Charlie, I have a Cooler Master case. I've built tons of machines in Cooler Master cases, but from what we've been seeing for the last few weeks, from what the community has been saying, I'm just gonna go straight ahead and say Corsair wins this one for their for their cases that can. That you can throw at a car and destroy that part of the car with, <laughs> for the fact that there's individual individual uh, uh, you know reservoirs for the power supplies. When when you've got four fans on a power supply, you know, <laughs> dedicated airflow for it. I mean, these guys have thought of everything. They're expensive machines. They're they're mostly big and black and and and, and minimalist, but they are monoliths. They are, are heavy-duty um, uh, cases. And while I love the variety that Cooler Master has, at this point it comes down to, if we're talking about quality and and still a little bit of variety, I'm going to say Corsair definitely gets it. Uh, but what do you think, my man? I agree. I know I brought up, I always bring up uh, Corsair's lack of variety. I like it. They got four, basically four lines, and all the cases within these lines follow a certain look. And none of them are too extravagant, but the 600T was my runner-up when I got my Raven 3. Um, Cooler Master sells that goddamn half case that I just don't like. Um, <laughs> I actually like the Cosmos that was brought up on Facebook. It's a pretty slick-looking case. I like the Storm, too, with the handle. Yes. Um, I've had the handle in my hand. It's rubbery, and it's sturdy and nice, and you want to land party that bitch and just be like, yeah. Let's go play some Borderlands because I'm going to bring my PC over. <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah. But, well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look one last time at the high end offerings for Cooler Master and the high end offerings for uh, Corsair. Obviously, I know right now Corsair is winning, but man, Cooler Master though, dude, it's so close. But every, I'm looking at the Corsair here, Charlie, and. From 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 the most popular to least popular, and every single case is 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 like a perfect case. They're all heavy duty. And then I look at Cooler Master, and and they've got some awesome ones. But uh... yeah, but their big cases are the ones that I told you I hate, and I understand <laughs> the nine thirty two, the nine twenty two, the X, the nine twelve. They're all five eggs as well. That's fine. I just think it looks ugly versus. But... The and here's the thing. If they're standing next to each other, nobody in their right mind, if there's a 932, if there's a half, a half 932 advanced, which has the USB 3.0 ports and it's the biggest one in their in their fleet, right? You or let me forget it. If you put the Cosmos 2, which is a beautiful brand new case, if you put the Cosmos 2 next to the freaking Corsair 800D, no one in their right mind will take the Cooler Master case. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say let's do Corsair. And it's not disparaging Cooler Master. I'm just saying Corsair in this, in this matchup is the more powerful and it, it, 
the quality it's not lacking in quality and it's not lacking in durability. So I say let's do I say Corsair wins, man. Absolutely. If you've never seen the bigger cases, you realize they are super solid and very nice. If you've never seen a 600T, you realize even the plastic on the 600T is it's strong, it's quality, it's not like my piece of shit. <laughs> um, the the fan filters, the way they push in and pop out is super slick. It's a really nice case. So yeah, I, I'm pretty solid with uh, Corsair too, though certainly nothing against Cooler Master. Well, so that brings it down, man. That brings it down to the to the uh, to the final round, which unfortunately, due to the conversation we've just had, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna go fast. I think that. So it comes down to um, Corsair versus Thermal Take. I think that Thermal Take falls victim to the same problem that Cooler Master does, that it has a great variety of products. It has some really cool, unique designs. It has some very good, durable units. But n none of the, nothing compares to the, to the 800D, even the 6 650, even the 600. Nothing compares to the to the quality of the of the Corsair line. I agree. I, I mean, their V2 and their V3, as far as the cheapy, cute little cases that I know so many people built in, uh, Tiger Direct. I mean, they're nice for what they are, but Corsair matches up with them with their I forget what like 300 R, 200 R. Um, yeah. Their high end stuff. Their Element G is I actually considered it for its colors and its fans, but it's it looks cheap and it's plasticky and we had like the Nvidia version of that same thing. Oh like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. forget what it's called, but it's really plain and flat looking, and it's got annoying color lines. <laughs> I don't. I, well, here, here's the thing, and here's the thing, man. Here's what's here's the problem. Okay, like we discussed in the intro to this show last uh, last week, the intro to this tournament. About almost 10 years ago, when it started becoming very easy for consumers to build their own machine. I know, obviously, you, can, you, you could have built your own machine 20, 30 years ago. But I'm saying it started becoming easy to walk into a computer store and just pick the parts up and go build your machine in, in two hours. Probably about 10 years ago. And around that time is when brands like Thermaltake and Cooler Master started to be able to capitalize on that and say, hey, you know... Or and you know and the Lian Lees and Silverstones and and and, and Antec and whatnot, and they were able to say you know what people want these crazy designs like you look at the thermal take stuff people want these insane crazy wacky designs to to make a budget build you want to take the thermal take V3 because it's forty dollars and you can go get a a, a, a you know a a, a a fifty dollar motherboard and processor AMD you know combo. You could go go build a four hundred dollar budget build that can play basic games, right? But to me, in the year twenty thirteen, to compete against the Xbox One, which was announced today, the PlayStation Four, and all this other next gen stuff, to build a good gaming machine, you want to put. I mean, let's say you have two thousand bucks and you go buy a Titan, and you go buy a real liquid cooling array, and you go buy a ton of a ton of fans. A ton of solid state hard drives, all this stuff. Do you want to put two thousand dollars worth of hard uh, of hardware in a cheap plastic shell, or do you want to put it in a damn near bulletproof machine with unlimited cooling possibilities that has room to f to also to even have room for your cat to sleep in there when you're all said when everything's all said and done? I mean. The, the Corsair machines are for the for this generation of expensive and high tech hardware. Nothing else will will house the stuff uh, better than. Just look at the Corsair 800D, man. That 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 proves every point that I'm trying to make here. Uh, I think Corsair wins, Charlie. I think I think Corsair takes it away, and um, I don't think I don't think there's a damn thing anyone could say to to, <laughs> to, to, to discourage me from that decision. What are your What's your final uh, uh, final thought? I. I could have gone either way. Um, as for, like you said, having a bulletproof case, I love my Lian Lee, and you know maybe it's a shame it got knocked off so early. Though, like I said, for me it was more about you know there were complaints about the guts, and there were complaints that the quality was starting to go down. 
but my you know it's solid aluminum, and I do recommend like the Lee Lee stuff. I recommend the older Silverstone stuff. Like you saw that that one uh, full aluminum one piece. Yeah, the unibody thing. Yeah, that's like four years old. You know, their new stuff is all going cheap and capitalizing on the name, I think. But, uh, yeah, so I, I will definitely um, back Corsair as uh, our pick, the uh, overclocked version of Iron Hammers' greatest. Here, you can say it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess the, uh, so chosen by the panel, by the, by the esteemed panel of judges at the United States chapter of ironhammers.org PC gaming and game of thrones podcast the overclocked battle of the month for may of the year of our lord 2013 PC case manufacturers from thermal take antag lian lee silverstone fractal design cooler master nzxt corsair comes out the victor and I think that all you need to do is look at the 800D. And uh, if it wasn't there a 900D that we just saw, there I, is a 900 something. Yeah. Look at the 900D, <laughs> and uh, and and revel in its beauty. So so far, Charlie, we have Razor as April's gear of the month for uh, being the lead PC gaming peripheral manufacturer and now we have Corsair as the leading PC gaming case manufacturer so my final question Charlie is next for the month of June what do we need to discuss I think I don't know what, <laughs> I what what's know. next what's the next what's the next big step um jeez uh, I don't. There's a lot out there. I don't know about my uh, ability to accurately critique it. I mean, with the cases, I've shopped forever and I worked in a store. The uh, with the peripherals, I've put my hands on pretty much every brand we discussed. Last the rocket. Well, even the rocket I saw at Tiger Direct at the last second. But uh, like, uh. We go into cooling. I couldn't really discuss water cooling that well, though. Again, I know what's out there. Um, power supplies and RAM would be weird. And yeah, CPUs. I, there's nothing I, there. I think those are. I think I think two weeks of shows about RAM would be the most boring crap on the planet. <laughs> Corsair wins. Yay. Bye. Yeah. Right. So how about this? How about the next episode? Let's talk about some new stuff. We'll talk about the new stuff coming up in summer and. Uh, uh, any any predictions of technology, uh, uh, you know, and then after that we can go in there and, and see what um, see what it looks for, and then the second week in June we can uh, have another tournament, another two week tournament. But for next week, we're just gonna catch up on on the year and uh, see what's coming out because I, I really don't know what the second half of the year hold uh, holds for uh, the PC gaming world. So we'll we'll just do that next week, and we can catch up on um, on the games that uh, we've been playing, of course, and whatnot. So. Ladies and gentlemen, um, podcast at ironhammers.org, uh, twitter.com slash, um, you know, I don't know, go on Twitter and type in Iron Hammers. Go on Google Plus, type in Iron Hammers. Google Iron Hammers, and you can find us. Um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely the Facebook page, I think, is, is uh, the second most amazing place to be, uh, second only to ironhammers.org. But we're everywhere, man. Charlie and I are all over the damn place. Come and find us. We will see you in exactly seven days. And Charlie, I think I think I'm done. Uh, do you have any last words to say, my friend? Um, I forget. Did I put anything on that on the paper on our plans? <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing, nothing on there. I, th I think I could be good. Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, pick up pick up some games. Uh, add us on Steam. There's a Steam Iron Hammers group, and you'll see Charlie. L W the fourth on there. You'll see Simon D I add us play some games. Hey, we do need two more players for Boulder, Borderlands, right? Um, what is it? Four total? Yeah. Um, yeah, two. We should, I guess we should, have, we should have a contest that lasts six months, and at the end of that six months, two lucky <laughs> players get to join us. 
Yeah, when Borderlands 3 comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, Borderlands 2, uh, I mean, Borderlands 1, Charlie and I are going to start playing the game, so we'll get into that. Other than that, folks, thank you for um, sticking around, and we will see you in seven days.